I mean, I understand there's a, a process of decision making that needs to be worked through, um, but I think a lot of people feel like you're trying to wriggle out of letting them have a ballot on a bit of a technicality in regards to the, to the timeline. And if I can just sort of run through that as quickly as I can. Um, the consultation on your draft uh, guidance ended in on the 14th of March 2017. Um, you were considering the responses. Um, at MQT in August, I chased you for it and you said the final guidance would be published soon. I chased for it uh, again in January at MQT and then you published the new guidance on the 2nd of February. Um, a lot of schemes were signed off very late during that period of you, between you publishing the draft and publishing the final guidance. 16 schemes um, had their funding signed off on or after the 1st of December 2017. And it's those people that I think really feel aggrieved. Um, and obviously there was a big gap between you uh, getting the responses to the consultation and publishing the new policy. So I've got two questions for the people on those estates where you signed off this funding very late in the process. Um, when did you really decide to change the policy um, after you received the consultation responses? And for these estates, why didn't you announce in February which estates were already signed off? Those people, they heard the new policy and they were full of hope that they would get a ballot. And it was very late, uh, late in March, that they found out that actually their funding had been signed off. Why didn't you put that information out there at the time? Okay, so, so just make sure I understand the point. So the suggestion is that I should retrospectively stop those schemes which had been negotiated and agreed, not receive them, because of the practice guidance published in February. You're not allowed to do that. So my, my question was, when did you decide you were going to change the policy? Not when did you, you know, there was the run-up to it being published, but you must have decided to do it much earlier. Similar to what you said about the funding, there was a process of you making well, there was, a decision. Well, there, there was a consultation process. There was then a general election call that nobody foresee, foresaw. There was then a long PERDA process. There was then the Grenfell Tower, which led, led, led to us uh, re-examining some of the responses, and then we published the, uh, the, the, uh, res the final report in February. So the process was ongoing and stuff. Uh, you, some of the members would be very quick to criticise me, the mayor, if uh, on consulted on plans to improve consultation, I didn't do proper consultation. Uh, and so it's really important, bearing in mind we're consulting on how you consult residents when it comes to this regeneration, that you consult properly. And I, and I won't apologise for consulting properly. And actually, you know, we've now got a situation where on any estate regeneration, where the developer is removing even one social home and wants funding from City Hall, they'll be required for the first time to undertake a ballot compulsorily. Separately, I'm using planning powers because I can't use this condition for planning powers to say if you remove even one social home, you've got to replace it, and the expectation is there'd be more social homes replaced as a consequence of a If we can um, less, that's an improvement. stick to these, these schemes in the meantime, though, because during that period, um, you were negotiating with the um, councils and the housing associations. Um, the residents, no, that, that, they that, won't that, get that, their ballots. That's inaccurate. No, that's, you can't mislead people, no. Some of these schemes were schemes that had been agreed when the previous mayor was in position, yeah. but were signed later on. Some of the schemes were schemes that were negotiated and agreed before we began the consultation, and some of the schemes were agreed after the consultation uh, began. But you're so what I'm asking you to do, no, so no, a very short no, no, time, no, no, is um, you're suggesting. Will you you're, you're suggest no, 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 but this, I need to ask you this question. Well, and I need to answer your previous question, which is your suggestion that somehow we try to delay publishing the final guidance to rush through these schemes is, is just not correct. So in order to clear that up, can you publish the decision-making documents for these schemes, the 16 schemes from December, um, including the evidence you asked for that would demonstrate resident support in the absence of a ballot? I understand you're not going to give them a ballot. Can you publish the evidence that the residents were in support of those schemes? Because that's your manifesto commitment. Your manifesto yeah. commitment wasn't for ballots, it was for resident right. support to be established. So, so what I've done is published for the first time ever a good practice from City Hall. What I've done is for the first time ever make it a requirement of funding for there to be a compulsory ballot if there's any state regeneration. Or what I've required if, if there's, if there's, if there's, if there's a demolition of one home. the transparency they I'll, need to And what I've no, also no, said no. is I'll use my planning powers to make sure if there is a loss of uh, social homes, they've got to be replaced like for like with the expectation of there being more, not less. Okay. Thank you very much.